How do you develop a character? More importantly, how do we create a character that will only exist as a single standalone image that will capture the viewer's attention and tell us who they are and their story with just a glance? In today's tutorial, we're going to explore this. First of all, welcome to part eight in this lesson on illustration for beginners, where we've been exploring how to make a book cover illustration from concept to final painting, focusing on composition, shadows, and color. This is my version of the epic 1965 sci-fi novel Dune by Frank Ebert, focusing on the native people of Arrakis, the Fremen. But I didn't want to focus on a specific character from the book because the story itself is so much more than just about one person, and so my character is a representation of all the Fremen, drawn together into this one female character. Stoic, proud, traditional and resilient, these are all qualities that I want to portray in the character design. I can do this with the character's stance and presence on the page, making the composition a huge part of the character's representation. I looked at the way many bronze statues of historical figures are portrayed in town squares. They usually stand well above the viewer, one leg forward and the statue gazing off into the distance stoically. Also placing the character front and center emphasizes the importance of the character, making them look powerful and imposing. In the last video, I showed you how to paint the background using an airbrush with acrylic ink. We masked off most of the foreground character to reduce any overspray, but this still leaves the character's outlines a little faint, too faint for my liking to paint, so I'm going to darken them just a little with the manganese violet pencil. I prefer the pencil for the outline as I can get really good control over the line, most of which will get absorbed into the final painting, so it's really just there as a guide. And I'm using a light box to help me see the initial line work. Drawing and creating characters for comics and book covers is one of my favourite things to do. I like to really dive into what the backstory of the character might be, as this is going to help me design their look. Often for a cover, you won't have much time to read the manuscript, so some quick backstory from the author always comes in handy. The costume itself plays an important part in the story. Called a still suit, it captures and filters the body's moisture to replenish the wearer. Pretty gross when you actually think about it, but adds another layer to the harshness of the planet that the Fremen endure and what they are prepared to do to live there. I do find it funny that in an essay titled The Science of Dune by John C. Smith, he said this about the still suit design. Using strict, literal interpretations from the Dune books probably would not work and most likely would cook the wearer like a crock pot. It is funny to think about. But that doesn't get in the way of making really cool looking sci-fi outfits. But the key is to make it also look practical believable and unbelievable at the same time. What I really like about the description of the suit is it's open to interpretation. One reader might see it differently to another. This gives me the opportunity to design the still suit how I think it would look. And I've taken inspiration from beetles with this hard exoskeleton-like shell that could be made of a lightweight rubber-like material, shielding all the tubes and insulation underneath that store and transfer water and cool the body. I've pre-mixed three tubs of varying chromatic greys with the Dela Rowney acrylic ink. I've mixed a flame red, rowney blue with a bit of brilliant yellow, then added a little of the white. Then a fourth tub has a brown sandy colour that I will layer over the greys, giving the suit this dusty, weathered and worn out look. I've pre-mixed the colours matching them to my initial colour sketch so the great thing is, if I try a small area and it doesn't work, I can add a bit more red or a bit more blue until I get the desired colour. I really enjoy working with acrylic ink because I can layer it on quite thick and it can give a nice texture and opaqueness, or I can water it down and give it a nice wash or watercolour effect. Not something you can really do with regular acrylics as it starts to break down the pigment when you just add water. However, you can get the same effects with a flow medium. The other great aspect to, to the ink is it works well with a brush, dip pen or airbrush, so it really is quite versatile. I just have to hope I've pre-mixed enough paint. 
For each section of the body, we'll just slowly build up the tones and shadows, creating volume to the body. Always keeping in mind where the light source is coming from so that the shadows and highlights stay consistent. Then once I like how the shadows look with the initial layer, I can start layering in the darker shadows. Then with a lighter grey, which has a bit more white in there, I can start using that for the highlights and increasing the shape of the curves in the body. Shadows don't necessarily have to be black. By using highlights in specific areas, you can make your greys seem much darker, pushing them back and giving the illusion of really deep shadows. Okay, so far we've got our background colour down and now we're working on the foreground, specifically the main character. As the darker shadows are coming into place, you can see how this contrast between the background and foreground becomes more pronounced. If you squint your eyes and look at the image, it's the figure which really stands out. Squinting at your image is always a helpful way to see what contrast and composition works well for an image. If you find that nothing seems to pop off the page, then the elements on that page are not going to be recognisable at a glance. If you're following along with this painting and designing your own cover piece, I'd love to see what it is you're working on. Check out the description below for details on how to do that. In the next video, we'll be continuing with the final stages of this piece, so please join me for that. And if you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, go back and watch them so you can get a context for the project and how you can start making your own illustrations. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.